they lack adequate knowledge. Institutions like MPA, Nimasa Customs, Nigerian Agri Quarantine, NAVDAC, SON, and even the liner carriers, they have a lot of knowledge gap which must be addressed if we must go into profitable export in Nigeria. Glad to have you back on this morning show on LN247. It is the front burner now, and our focus in, is on the Nigerian government's effort to boost non oil What is your experience when you have to export yam out of Nigeria? Yeah, uh, our experience has not been a very good one uh because uh, we are dealing with agricultural produce that uh, is perishable and you need to get it to the port of destination timely uh, but usually there are a lot of uh, delays at the port and so many um regulatory and bureaucratic challenges that we have uh, exporting yams from ghana has become so easy and it is because they have made it that way if you go to ghana there is a, an export yam export pack house at tema uh, because the pack house is located very close to the port you know they just truck the uh the, the 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 container or the shipment to to the ship and so all they have reduced all the bureaucratic uh, bottlenecks they have only allowed three agencies of government to oversee the export of yams in ghana so when you hear that ghana is exporting yam ghana is number one in yam production they have deliberately taken certain steps to make it happen it did not just happen by miracle. In Nigeria, I cannot count the number of agencies of government that are involved in export of yam or agricultural produce in, in general. When we exported yams to the US and we carried all the documentations that we were given to US, and I was uh, there myself in, in Houston, when we carried all those documentations that we were given here in Nigeria, every regulatory agency claiming to have a mandate, the person in charge of clearing, the clearing agent for, for the yams in the U.S., he looked at all the documents and he laughed. He now picked only the quarantine, the NAQS, the phytosanitary certificate. That was the only thing that was of interest to him. But here on the Nigeria side, they will insist that you must do this and do that and do that. Requirements that U.S. does not need. Nigerian regulatory bodies will, will say we must have it. And these are the issues, and that is why uh it has been very very difficult matching up to ghana would like to know are they what, what sort of improvements should be done maybe pro probably we, can we take advantage of the digital uh you know advancement is there anything that was done digitally to advance uh, these exportation process you know what advantage can we really take uh you know in in uh, make having a seamless exportation process in nigeria we need to streamline the, the documentation processes. We should provide what we call the single window systems. And that is what the Ghanaians have done. And that is exactly what I explained, that they have rationalized, they have rationalized the bureaucracy in such a way that they have what we can call a one-stop shop. So you stay in one facility do all your packaging and then the approvals are given in that same single facility 
And these are all the issues. Not having a single window system is um, uh, what creates uh, the problem. But all these uh, isolated places can be brought together in a virtual environment. It's not saying that, like, like you said, what works in Ghana may not necessarily work in Nigeria. But can we have a one-stop shop that is virtual? So that I don't have to travel to uh, Ikeja to get uh, NAQS and then I'll go and be looking for the customs official somewhere else and then go and be looking for uh, all the other people that claim to be to have mandate to be involved in the export of uh, non-oil uh, commodities. Yeah, Mr. Balola, you are the PRO of the Shipping um, Association in Port Harcourt. What is happening back and forth from your end, from those involved? What are you doing to ensure that this spoilage can be brought to minimal? It's the challenges we are having on export processes in, in Nigeria are just based, are broadly based on institutional challenges and transactional challenges. When I say institution, I'm referring to challenges posed by government agencies who are saddled with the responsibility of facilitating and coordinating the export process in Nigeria. They lack adequate knowledge and institutional synergy that could make them efficient in their service delivery. Institutions like MPA, Nimasa, Customs, Nigerian Agri Quarantine, NAVDAC, SON, Export Promotion Council, Federal Produce Inspectors, Inspection Agents, Terminal, terminal Operators, Freight Forwarders, and even the liner carriers, they have a lot of knowledge gap, which must be addressed if we must go into profitable export in Nigeria. Transactional challenges, I'm referring to the communicative actions involving all these parties or government agencies in the processes of exports, particularly the Nigerian customs and the challenges of uh, a lot uh, a, a lot of freight forward that face in terms of falsehood and no accuracy in their declaration. Then the reality on ground or the current state of affairs, I'm referring to bribery and corruption. On the, process, on the part of processing export documents, particularly in the areas of getting certifications, documentations and processing for cargo exports. This has been a major challenge in Nigeria, particularly in the Port Harcourt axis. Because the administrative and operational enforcement we are lumped together without no clear mandates. And the use of discretion by officers or personnel in charge constitutes a lot of headache onto us here. Open-ended communication on directives without any effective date of enforcement. Lack of unity of purpose among the government agencies in the port. It causes delays, extortion, and visible corruptions along the port corridor. Prolonged human interface, even when you have the electronic portal. So the operational challenges are lack of standard or best practice, non-compliance with extant laws, rules and regulation of exporting countries, then we come to the issue of enforcement, especially the use of government fiat. Policy implementations are 
on on exports are very rigid because customs that were supposed to facilitate exports are the ones causing causing agencies of government such as custom agri quarantine son and federal produce inspectors they own their own interpretation to government policies which may all not always be in line with the overall intentions aims and objective of such policy statements uh, looking at uh, the economic implications, what are your thoughts, you know, on Nigeria's uh, slow export growth rate and how does it affect the country's GDP? You know, a few days ago, we heard reports that uh, Nigeria's uh, GDP, you know, went up by, you know, just a, a single digit uh, figure. We're hoping for double digits. Do you think that uh, if we do the need for, we could, you know, see our GDP go up? What are your thoughts, sir? And I, I think that uh, it's about time we decouple from the uh, market that is associated with the oil uh, and gas uh, sector. Uh, you remember um, globally we are moving away from the use of fossil fuels, uh, renewable energy is uh, coming on stream. And if we do not do what other countries uh, in the Middle East are doing, that is moving away from oil, you see some of these countries in the Middle East, what is giving them much more money now is not the oil is there, but they are using it to diversify or diverge into other things like tourism, uh, today, everybody wants to go to Dubai on holiday and all of that. They are moving away from the oil to some other means. And I think the earlier we begin to do that, looking at the future, it will be better for our country. Allow us to dominate this other sector. And they have found out that the market is sweet. If it is not sweet, they will not be uh, trying to see that they do not have competition uh, from a country like Nigeria that they are afraid that if we come in, because we are the number one yam producer in, in the world, we will, there will be nowhere. And that is why they are trying to protect that market jealously and uh, making sure that... Um, a big country, a big yam producing country like Nigeria does not come in. We are able to put in place uh, issues of security and uh, we ensure that um, our farmers get the needed support uh, that they need so that we can produce massively both for export and for food security. I'd like to ask you, you talked about, uh, you know, bribery and corruption and, and all of those uh, bottlenecks that ex ex exist in these processes. What are the measures that can be taken to address the lack of transparency and corruption in Nigeria's exports process? What we need to do is straightforward. We need to bridge the knowledge gap in export processes and procedures. What do I mean by this? There must be adequate knowledge of the legal framework and all extant provisions by the federal government, considering the requirements and criteria for exports. So individuals who are participating must, must have good knowledge of this requirements so also the agencies particularly the customs agri quarantine inspection agencies must also have adequate knowledge of what they are supposed to do and how best they should deliver service to the people this if this is done and with all infrastructure on ground then we will be able to solve the issue of lack of transparency, lack of transparency, accuracy, and then the issue of bribery will also be resolved. 
what is the first thing from your end that you think that they should be doing? Is it that they do not have the adequate knowledge or what should they be doing? Yes, um, and it's important that you have asked this question. Uh, you remember uh, when Chief Abbe was a uh, Minister of Agriculture, it was a celebrated event that happened in Lagos. Uh, what happened was that the yams that went to the U.S., the regulatory body, I don't want to call their name now, Insisted that the head, the yam head must be must be cut off before the yams will be allowed to leave the shores of this country. So what happened after the whole ceremony in Lagos? Uh, the exporter, the person that handled the uh, ex to. Uh, to US, um, he, is, he is from Benue State. He had to stay back in Lagos to cut the yam heads. Now, what happened was that when the yams now got to the US, we had yam without heads. And the person that even arranged with us, because there are some uh, Nigerians in the US who um we contacted and they said look the bureaucratic bottlenecks in nigeria is too much that they cannot come to nigeria to 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 fast to to do anything with export of yams to the u.s but if we are able to get the yams to the u.s they will buy it from us wholesale but they cannot come because if they are coming to Nigeria to do this in the name of patriotism, and they made it very clear that patriotism does not pay bills in the US. So they said they are not coming, but that if we bring the yams, they will take it away from us. So with that knowledge, we took the yams to the US, but because the yams, the, the regulatory body in Nigeria insisted that the yam must, the head must be cut so that, uh, you know, it does not germinate. You know, when you store yam for some time, it tends to, to germinate and then say so that it will not germinate along the way. And we couldn't understand where that was coming from. It's a clear example of lack of capacity. They said we should wax it. So we, they cut the yam and they used um, wax at an elevated temperature and they, they waxed the cut end of the yam. And what basically was happening was that the end of the yam, be, uh, you know, in touch with the wax became boiled, became uh, boiled, you know, and that was where the yam started to get rotten eventually because the person that um, uh, took delivery of the yams in the u.s had to cut the yam so we saw exactly where the rotten rottenness started and how it progressed but i we found out that many of our regulatory uh, people did not know that when you clean it's already value addition when you sort is already value addition when you do grading you have not affected the physical form of the product but you have already added value so when you say let us export value added products it does not mean you must change the form of the product before you will say you have added value you can add value simply by cleaning and packaging you can add value simply by sorting and grading. But I can assure you, there's, there is not this understanding among many of our regulatory bodies, as we found, found out, uh, going to uh, facilitate this value addition guidelines that the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is trying to produce for the whole country. Last one as regarding this uh, is that... Uh high-handedness of government agencies 
greed and self-centeredness must be addressed. The use of discretion by these officers is detrimental to the, to the required services they, they are supposed to deliver to the public. So this must be addressed. Thank you. I see that uh, the issue of bottlenecks, uh, people said bottlenecks 63.6%. It's a big problem that we must uh, attack head on so that all the bottlenecks to uh, our export activities will be removed. Let's know that there is no bottle without a neck. All bottles have neck. But the necks are of different categories. There is a long neck. There is a short neck. Let us make the necks very short so that uh, we can get the product out. Because if it is not... Uh, very short you are trying to push the the cashew out of the bottle you have to shake and shake and shake and that is what the nigerian exporters have been doing shaking and shaking and shaking to be able to get the cashew out of the bottle because the bottleneck is too long